Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Today's video is brought to you by the books that we make, so buy them. Red Room, Trigger Warnings, Red Room, the Antisocial Network, uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Each of these trade paperbacks contains four complete horror stories and also contain uh, about 60, 70 pages of additional material that you're not going to find anywhere else. Jimmy has Hulk Grand Design Monster and Madness on the racks right now while supplies last, but don't you worry because it's getting that uh, Treasury Edition format that you need to pre-order ASAP uh, because it's going to come out in the early part of 2023, and you know as well as I do that it might be hard to find if you don't get in on the ground floor. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive is an example of that in a way. It was out of print for a little while, but new printing, it's in all good comic stores, no excuse not to have this comic on your bookshelves right now support cartoon escape fabe buy our books and uh jimmy it's been a little while since we have some richard corbin under the microscope shouts to the k faber who sent this to me uh i had no idea that corbin even did the swamp thing issues and i guess he also did issue number 20 which we'll look at uh, again in the future but seven and eight of uh, whichever series this is good luck going for like grabbing the indicia and trying to figure it out because you ain't gonna. Yeah, it used to be that uh, they just made it harder for you to find comics. They're in fewer locations, right? Now it's like, hide even what volume it is. Exactly. Like, good luck tracking it down even as a back issue. Yeah, right. Like, when when the dude told me, I was like, okay, is it the one where Brian K. Vaughn, like, did the little girl swamp thing? No. That came out, you know, two years before a completely different book. Is and... it the 52 relaunch swamp thing? <laughs> right. Is that what this is? I don't think so. I yeah. think this is yet a different volume. Who the fuck knows? But the cool thing is, we got two. We got two issues. Uh, Richard Corbin has never lost his fastball, and there are certain things that he draws great. And when you have a fucking Yeti on the cover looking like this, dumb in the face, <laughs> like this, we're in a this is a Richard Corbin comic. Yes, you yeah, know? it's a monster book. Fantastic. What else do you need? Fantastic. The color ain't bad. You know, like, looking at it at this level and looking at the monitor, it feels like good kind of good coloring on top of Corb. Yeah, and the story is basically cryptozoologists. They're hunting down these monsters like a Yeti, yeah. like a swamp monster. Um, good setup. This what is, else do you need? This is before Bitcoin is invented, but there is kind of like a, a, a Silicon Valley zillionaire guy, and I like to think that he's a crypto bro. He kind of acts like a crypto bro, but obviously it's before that time. But I just like the idea of adding a little more crypto to it. You saw the, the face without a bullet going through it, and mm. just look at that distortion. That's a really good facial expression for a Yeti. <laughs> and our guy fucking lighten up, uh, you know, a stogie, job well done. Look at even the detail on, like, his ice snow chomper boots. Those yeah. metal uh, strap-on claws. So happy with himself. See, this is the kind of shit that gets you canceled these days. You do this kind of thing like that. That I think it was a Western PA story. There's like some dentist guy. Who, it wasn't PA, but yeah, that was, story it was wasn't a big PA. One. I, I think Minnesota, maybe. Uh, okay, Milwaukee. I don't know where that guy was from, but yeah, he didn't do well. Couple, yeah, couple, couple different uh, inner monologues. Here we have a cryptozoologist guy that's just kind of he's a hippie and doesn't get along with with humanity so well. Goes off on his own. You know, if this is a modern story, he'd he'd be he'd be that coyote guy, like just traveling with this puppy and uh, vlogging about it. I love the Corbin head. Yeah, especially with that hat on, like the proportions are just just distorted enough to make these guys cartoons. That's the thing, man, because he'll he'll like do some pretty accurate lighting, but he'll push it. You know, like that looks like it could be very referenced, but it's a Corbin drawing through and through. Yeah, nobody's like him. Great textures. And that that dull line, that that blunt line that he uses, I need to see an artist edition. Like I need to see what what makes those marks. Is it a felt tip pen? It's so true with him too, because he does line art, just black and white line art, yeah. and it's spectacular. And then he does the painted airbrush gradient art, equally spectacular. Yeah. Our guy has a knack for uh, tracking stuff down finds this this stump and thinks he found his guy dude i i was thinking about you while reading this man because of all your ohio grass man talk and and like <laughs> your, your 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 bigfoot love i feel yeah. like that's in here i'm i'm on board because that's what the dude's doing with his with his uh monologue it's you know the in portland they're called this in this part of the world they're called that 
man. Uh, and whenever that stump stands up, revolutionizing uh, Swamp Thing, making it his own. You know, you have your different versions. You got your Nestor Redondo mm-hmm. Swamp Thing. You got your Bernie Wrights, and you got your Tottlebin Bisset. That that became the dominant. You know, like everybody was kind of ca- like uh, doing their Gilbert version of the Bisset Tottlebin for the longest. This is uniquely and unmistakably Richard Corbin. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of superhero in that one. You know, that six pack of abs that he's throwing on there. A lot of muscle, I should say. Yeah, yeah, which is a Corbin deal. You know, if this was any other kind of book, you just know what would be there. (laughs) Yeah. If if Corbin was left to his own devices. Yeah, you wonder if that's part of the instruction whenever Corbin signs on. (laughs) (laughs) No twig and berries. Just menacing our guy. This is the last image our dude sees, and then, and then it's 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 cut for a while. I really like Corbin the design part on the face, mm-hmm. where like you see the teeth, and it's yeah. almost like like an opening, yeah, much more than a mouth, yeah, kind of disturbing. Yeah, very much so. You know this what? Uh, note image. on the creative team, uh, Will Pfeiffer is your guest writer for this art, th- these two issues. Um, Brescia, I think it's Martin Brescia, is your artist, and if I'm or the color artist, and if I'm not mistaken, that's how Alberto's. One generation, fuck if I know. Offspring, two generations, maybe like a grand, a grandchild. Fuck if I know. Cut to crypt, crypto, crypto Burroughs crib, and he's just that obnoxious rich guy. Yeah, it's another Corbin monster. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> he, it's 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 one of those funny things, man. Where uh, Corbin probably like drew, designed this character ten seconds before you know starting this page. Because he refines him over the two issues and to, to just kind of become what he is. Uh, so, you know, super obnoxious dude, backwards hat, uh, nouveau riche, to say the least, man. Porn star shirt, unkempt, fucked up hair, uh, got like his own Jeeves kind of guy who plays an important part in the comic, uh, who's very literal, by the way. You're the only one who's worth a damn, but, but sir, if I'm uh, worthy of damnation, yada, yada, dude. <laughs> Just having fun, fun here. Guy, yeah, fun guy to party. <laughs> this is a, such a funny... His bat cave of uh, the things I guess he's killed and yes. taxidermied. Yeah, man. And it feels a, kind of spare, you know? Like, like I feel like this is a two-page spread that you could work on over the course of your month. And if you get any time over, man, maybe draw a couple extra gimmicks. Yeah, I think the the um, the coloring might have helped. Yeah. You know, put put some shadow disappear some of this room to make it a little bit more of a man cave i like the stuff laying around on the floor and so you know what a lot. some of it reminds me of ben mara and it's really weird to me whenever i'll see like different artists you know you'll see these little things where like there are overlaps sure. in, in different art styles not one that i would expect to see overlap with the ben mara but the stuff laying on the floor really feels like it for some reason bra handgun pornography <laughs> Stuff is unkempt. This guy dis- has a very big, beautiful home and disrespects it. That seems right. You yeah, know, totally. With the, with the, uh, new, newly rich kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. We get in a deadline issue here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, these are a little fade in. Probably the same piece of art. This is this art. And this is this art. Okay. So it's two drawings. Still getting ad space. Are there ads in comics still? Who would pay for that? All right, man. Our cryptozoologist guy waking up. And it's the uh, Portlandia Catch-22, man. The, uh, our guy's a vegan. Our guy eats swamp things for breakfast. I don't know what this is. is he's, get, he's getting fed? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's putting putting this caterpillar in his mouth. That's the vegan revelation uh, whenever right. he rejects that. Uh, full moon zine, have to say it, because that's all we draw. <laughs> I never saw Sky Captain. You ever see it? No, I think Visually, there's a lot it looks of... Visually, amazing. Um, yeah, a lot of green screen, I believe. Oh, yeah, I think 100% of it. Pretty fun, the swamp in rain, which right. I assume would be a lot of time in the swamp, but don't see it that often. So. It's true. Yeah, and our guy's trying to... Uh, you know, find some common ground. Hey, I like being alone a lot. But but Swamp Thing's like, no, no, no. I am alone. Yeah, and the guy freaks out because this thing talked. Yeah. And that's what should happen. Totally. Totally. Uh, so we cut to uh, Abby Kane, or Abigail Cable, husband, and like Tefe. This would be the Brian K. Vaughn. 
okay. s- uh, series. Like, I will be honest, I've never read an issue of that. I yeah. was unaware of it. So right. I was a little bit confused as to who these characters were. Yeah, I don't remember if it's before or after. I think I think the girl Swamp Thing is like before because I, I had a error on my pull list. Like, why would I do that as a adult? What? Yeah, what do you remember about it? Was it a good artist on it or something? No, nah, like I think it was like, you know what it was? It was, um, we're turning a new leaf with uh, Vertigo, no pun intended, and it was like, here are the new series, 100 Bullets, um, That Swamp Thing, I think. I could be conflating some shit, but I, I was like, my chance to like, let, okay, let me get in on the ground floor of like a new Vertigo. I did maybe... Transmetropolitan was Helix. I don't know. It's, it's all it's all blurring. But but that was the deal, and I had it on there and just kept it on there for a little while. It was okay. Some weird kind of like dream sequence thing, right? The guy opens the door. Yeah, I don't understand. Again, this is like it's part of the Abbey, yeah, family group, whatever this is, and I don't really know their story, so I'm not sure what that page would have meant. It's a cool drawing, yeah, but I don't know exactly what the story part is. See, you see how our guy is slowly becoming more into who he is, <laughs> and that's a recognizable figure. Like I, like I know this guy in movies. I, I, I don't know his name, Bob Hoskins or something. They're almost having a back and forth through the TV. In they that are, sequence. yeah. Yeah, they are. It's a cool visual. It's a, it's a good scene. All right, man. Or crypto scientist guy. Still going back and forth. Swamp Thing is like, look at him. He like Corbin is figuring out his his Swamp Thing. You know, page after page, and it's always this monolith. Right. You know, this giant three point perspective. Yeah, it's practically a tree. This is this is literally like that fo- that video of the. The Patterson Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, is the is. pose. And I think that in his Rob Zombie Sasquatch comic, he does the same bit. You know, Kansas City guy, right? Like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of wilderness out there. A lot of possibility for imagination. But just look at—it's it. almost a Wicker Man, also. Yeah, it is. I really think he does good with the swamp stuff. Mm-hmm. That feels wet and like. Muddy, murky. Yeah. yeah, look at that, man. Using circle templates for the for the um raindrops. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it should work, but I think it works well. Man, I would hate to have to draw that too. Yeah. This guy's amazing. I, I really like that character face. Just getting muckier and muckier. And as we on. as we get closer to Swamp Thing's face, like equally that Corbin design shines. Yeah. All right, Swamp Thing's sending him on his way. Swamp Thing smells a rat. There's some shit coming, man. And if you want to live, get the hell out of here. I would like to see the original of this panel. Yeah. Very strange. I feel like I've seen Corbin do those kind of odd things with, like, a shape on yeah. top of something. Yeah. Very unusual. And everybody we established coming together. That's how it goes, right? I, if, if it's good. All right, man. Now we know that this is the big game hunter that's here to um, add to his trophy room. And then, like, what, what, what? What is all this? It's our, it's our Jeeves guy, and we're establishing. I feel like one of the tropes in uh, Vertigo comics is that like everybody's a heel. Like when you ha- when you establish somebody, they all have some weird goth back background. And also, Arcane. Arcane gets disposed of pretty early in, in the Len Wein, mm-hmm. Bernie Wrights and stuff, but they just con- consistently bring him back. It's it's the one arch villain. Because, you know, some of those other arch villains were real lousy. There was that weird alien thing with, like, the little suction fingers. It had, like, a space, like a Wally Wood space suit on. Pretty weird. I need to go through those again. Yeah, yeah, I got them pulled for future episode fodder for sure. The Roots of Swamp Thing reprints. Yeah, that's what I have. I got a couple, but whatever. Right, I don't have the full run of them is why I haven't read them all at once, but I should probably fill in that gap and then read them all. Yeah. He's so good with these kinds of... (laughs) The grotesques. This, too, really nice panel. I love that you just get a little peek of, like, the skyline through the trees. Yeah. 
really illustrates nighttime and the thickness of like what you're stuck in. I'm assuming, you know, he's hitting these with circle templates and then the colorist is doing a bit, but then does the colorist just add those as grace notes for the, for the camera highlights? Yeah, I don't know. That's something I'm curious about, but we have a classmate of uh, Tefe, I guess is her name. And uh, she's, she's, you know, Tefe is a weird chick, man. I mean, she's the product of uh plant and human. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, she ain't gonna, she's a nearly carry white, but this girl, she, she believes her and decides, see the motivations are weird. Cause like she just decides to go out into the swamp at night. Why, why not look for her dad? Maybe in like the broad daylight, uh, but she's going to investigate the swamp for the potentiality that, uh, she finds something, uh, truthful to Tefe's story. That's a great image to me. Because we've kind of seen, we you know, it's it's how do you keep showing cool Corbin Swamp things? Yes. And this is such a good one because you get that monolithic shadow of his shape and then hit the face with the you, light. You do. And, like, let's try to break that down because, you know, we're here for the Corbin, not for the computer color. So he's drawing, like, straight edge and then, and then uh, tapering off so that you get this black area. So this color is all the colorist. You know, there's black ink there that's being tapered off and also getting the rest of the swoop is an added piece based on the indicator right here that Corbin is given to the guy. So it's all black up here and you just get that shape. It's kind of cool. I would love to see that original piece. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough lifting for a colorist. Cause what are you supposed to do? Well, I think you just, I, I mean, yeah, like I think this works, Yeah. but I think as a, a black and white image, I think it's, it's oh, much yeah. str stronger. Also, when he plays with the foliage stuff, and see, we're seeing that blunt line, and it is like one line weight, uh, and he's going in there. As a remnant of the Beset Toddle bin, you get a lot of spatter, you get a lot of weird sponges and weird shit. He's drawing everything. Yep. Which, which is different than what a lot of those guys would do. I wonder what he drew with, if that is a rapidograph. Or if it's uh, markers or something. That's what I'm saying. I think it's like a weird felt tip because the blunt of it, it doesn't, the way, the the end of it, it doesn't, I don't think it's a rapidograph. It feels like there's like a, like a bleed. He seems so conscious of the end results of things. Oh yeah. That I feel like the, the tool isn't nearly as important as the piece that you're going to photograph for reproduction. Yeah, totally. It's just one of those mystical things that like, I want to try to have a line lately, you know, see what it would be like to put that line down on a piece of paper. Still cartooning, but still lighting his characters interestingly. When you see it so well lit like this, like, is this a piece that he sculpts real quick for himself? I'd be curious. I would love to see, like, a walkthrough of that studio collection of all the pieces that he's made. He's pretty consistent with it. Yeah, that's one of those, I think, secret tricks. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're making comics and you're and you're admiring this guy's lighting, and then you realize, like, oh, yeah, he would build 3D models and, uh, and, and really light them, have something to reference. You see, that's what uh, Alex Ross does with, with that uh, Fantastic Four thing. Weird dream, dream sequence deal. Those, like, uni men or whatever that were definitely inspired by, like, one very specific cover by Ghastly Graham Ingalls of Haunt of Fear, the one with the... There's a guy built out of a hand and shit. How cool was that, man? Uh, interviewing um, Dan Klaus and hearing him say the words, I was a Bernie Wrightson fan, and then discovered Ghastly Graham Ingalls. Like, I've never heard him reference any mainstream comic dudes that would have been contemporary when he would be reading comics. It's almost the same arc as um, the cryptozoologist from before. It happened upon the Swamp Thing, who is like the least kept secret of the Louisiana Bayou. Yes. And our guy kind of doing his bit to kind of protect. Little circle eyes are perfected with a blaring light coming towards them. The circle eyes are really good, and they're also kind of far apart. Yeah. Which gives it that not human quality. Yeah, for sure. Like, look it's how far apart they are there. Yeah. Yeah, completely doing his own thing. It feels alien that way. Corbin always strong to sticks to his convictions. I mean, this looks like any Corbin <laughs> comic. You Even know? a pig nose on that guy. The um, and he would use com computer. You know, he'd use typography even on his oldest shit. Took us a while to get our hunter in the presence of our swamp thing. Even after we establish all that stuff, that that last issue. 
I think that that would probably be the challenge of these comics is uh, like introducing characters that would interact with uh, so that it's not just like all inner monologue swamp thing talk. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like in the middle of the swamp, that's extremely hostile land. How many people are even getting out there? Yeah, swamp thing destroys the the shotgun, as we would expect, and we learn that our butler guy is not what. Of course not. What we expected, man. It's kind of a cool deal. You're conjuring up a little blade, a little mystical blade. And look at him just standing there like a golem. Just a big scarecrow. And then when it comes time, dude, becomes a Bigfoot unto himself. Here's our teleportation. Is that what just happened? Yeah, I guess so. Look at the rotting dude. You know, like the writing cryptozoologist guy, bugs in the eyes, every orifice, centipedes and shit crawling on the shirt. Man, I bet it takes no time at all for a body to disappear in that swamp. No, sir. To be reclaimed. No, sir. And then this is another one of those pieces where it comes to motivation and just like not believing anything. I don't believe it. A couple of schoolgirls happen upon a dead body and are just kind of chill about it. And investigating his body and notes and, like, not scared at all. There's some goth-ass chicks. Man, these are Vertigo readers. It's Karen Berger and um, <laughs> Shelley Bond. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> They've seen it all, man. This this root branch, almost a tentacle. Yeah. That's a cool piece if you're doing a, a, swamp, a book like a Swamp Thing or a monster book in general, trying to make these other shapes resemble that uh, that kind of monster tone. He would always do this thing where he would give you some drawn texture up front, some in the back, and then he would go ham with the color in that in-between stage. Now our girl's just frolicking as our Swamp Thing is dreaming, remembering the days of uh, Alec Holland. Would you call that a tangent? No, I'm all right with it. I feel like coloring probably doesn't help that. You have the dark going into the that hat, that bandana thing. I think the value creates more of a tangent than the, than it would if it were just... If you saw that in black and white, I think it'd be fine. Yeah. Our girls leave the, the bayou totally uh, nonplussed at happening upon a, a, a dead carcass. And then our Swamp Thing doing what he does. Just kind of chilling there. Yeah, being alone. That's a cool Swamp Thing characterization. I love the swamp there at the end. Yeah. I wish that it was the, this whole book was more this color palette. Because I don't know that we see that like brown, muddy water, sick pea soup color. Yeah. Very much. And that's a good color. That is a gross color. <laughs> Brasia does not do a bad job on the computer color to try to kind of approximate. I There's not one moment really where I got anything but a Corbin vibe, yeah, you know, and he's so established himself with color, you know, one of the best color comic guys in like the seventies. Yeah, for sure. And something that could be a, like you could go wrong. You yeah. could go really badly wrong with Corbin coloring it. So, um, I wonder if Brescia, if, if does some research, you know, tries to uh, make I'm sure saying. that it, that it, that it flatters Corbin stuff. Cause you do have a lot you could reference. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I, I, I mean, I think we even looked at on this channel, like the Lovecraft issue of uh, Heavy Metal that has Bre Alberto Brescia work and Richard Corbin work in there, man, so... Mm, I never even thought about that. If he's related, like, there it is, man, you must have reference on hand. Yeah. Two issues of Richard Corbin's Swamp Thing. There's all these uh, weird odds and ends towards the late period of his career that we can look at. And you know what? I got a couple complete miniseries. Shouts to Hans Rickheit, man, who sent us a half box a while back. With, uh, man, with, that was years ago. Yeah, it was, man. Uh, with uh, five issues of Den. Uh, what's the dinosaur joint? Um, Is there one called Children of Fire or something? Son of Mutant World. Children, Yeah, Children of Fire. That's one, one of, of them. We need to look at all that stuff because that's the self-published stuff. Yes, the, the Fantagore uh, joints. Yeah, that stuff is really pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, it's so weird that this stuff exists because it was, I don't remember this coming out. This was no. like years later when I'm looking at Richard Corbin and like, what? He did Swamp Thing issues? Yeah. yeah. So bizarre. And it's still Corbin. Like whenever he did the, uh, the Brian Azzarello, um, uh, Constantine stuff, I think that was the first time that he like dipped in, you know, he did, he did a Batman black and white and that was probably, that was probably the first where it's like, holy fuck, man, Richard Corbin doing a mainstream, like, why would he do that? And then he just... 
He did a bunch of it. He did so much. The last part of his career is, is all that kind of kind of shit. And uh, it's an interesting new leaf to turn from a guy who was doing pretty much his own thing for 30 years. Do we have a Corbin playlist yet? We will. Yeah. Yeah, because there's we, we've covered a few Corbin, so I was gonna say people watching this at home, like go seek out our Corbin stuff because we've looked at some really good Corbin things, including the Angolem catalog, which is probably as close as we're gonna get to an artist edition, sadly. Yeah. But uh, it's quite a book, and it's it's quite a showcase of Corbin, a good survey. Let's give them the opportunity to go check that stuff out, Jimmy. K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there, man. Hulk Grand Design, Monster Madness, the comic books are in stores now. And in early 2023, the oversized Treasury edition with the fluorescent green cover will be available. I recommend pre ordering that just because we've had issues getting it to print. So uh, you don't want to miss your copy on that. Best book I've designed. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive is back in print from Image Comics. You can get that wherever you buy books. Eight complete stories of the homeless ninja on a skateboard are perfect for any action or superhero fan in your life. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download a bunch of my comics and art and out of print stuff including a collection of my freelance covers uh, along with notes on how I made those. Red Room, the Antisocial Network, Red Room Trigger Warnings, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the Red Room universe. Uh, each of these books contains four complete horror stories that are self-contained and uh, 70 pages or so of additional material in each that you're not going to find anywhere else. Uh, if you go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor, I'm serializing new uh, comics that uh, won't see the light of day for quite some time. And uh, three bucks for the archive that's less than a penny a page. Hit my link tree up in the description below this video. You can get to all those destinations. Jimmy, tell the people what else we have out there. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, all kinds of good stuff at our spread shop also in the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those merchandise, Jimmy will be on our way. Read more comics.